Here we are in Cookville, Tennessee. I'm Steve Garner and John Covington, and we are going to show you how the Comet 37 is deployed. Uh, here you see it being rolled into position, or one like it. Uh, wheels are slightly different on this model. It can be moved by one person. Uh, here you see it attached to this Jeep and ready for deployment. All right, and uh, John will put in the receiver hitch pin, very important part. Now, right now, it's essentially in the deployed position. We've got the jack legs uh, positioned to level it out. And then uh, John's going to show how it uh, gets folded for travel. Okay, first step, uh, unscrew that top bolt with the handle on it. That will need to be back in place when it's deployed. Gives it a uh, better structure. Now he'll remove the bottom pin. And it's ready to fold up. The jack legs will remove, which we don't need to do this time. They just unpin right there. And you can pull those wheels off. Um, and that's a good idea for long-term deployment. You're going to want to pull the wheels off as well when, when it's in the deployed position. So he's going to go on ahead and remove those. Okay, we're back down to folded uh, down for deployment. And uh, John is leveling the legs out. Okay. Top bolt is in. Side pin in. And the jack legs are set to give it rigidity when it inflates. We are ready to go. Okay, John has uh, untied the drawstring rope, opening it up. Inside we have the power cord. And on top, the stake bag. That mesh allows you to spray off the stakes and get them clean without removing them from the bag. And that's all the rope bags. Uh, ropes inside individual bags uh, to help keep them from getting tangled for rapid deployment. Uh, you can see the top of the tower right there. There's that single um, 5 16 inch stud bolt that you can screw down a tube flange to or any number of uh, different attachments. John is hooking up the control rope. That's the uh, most critical item when you're deploying this thing. It gives you the complete control over the tower while you're deploying. Uh, in the top, uh, he is closing the secondary deflation zipper. That's an airtight zipper. It's underneath the cover. There's an outer cover on this tower, which helps to keep it uh, clean and keeps it resistant to abrasion. Those are the uh, Yagi mounts, the Velcro, you can mount a Yagi antenna there. And uh, that load patch there we're going to attach the control rope to. And he's going to toss out that rope. You can see how these rope bags work. You, they uh, keep it tangle free. You just load them in. You don't uh, twirl them up or anything. Okay, so now John will pull out the tower. Very important to keep the base of the tower in mind and have put that top plate very near the base. You're going to keep it near the base during the entire deployment and also when you're retrieving it. So now he's going to pull out the rest of the tower.
So now, essentially, the tower is folded in half with the top and the base together. And we're going to look at the inside of the tower. Big airtight zipper here underneath the, the cover and underneath a uh, Velcro flap. You can see the mounts for the light. Uh, the light simply uh, plops down on top of that. It's magnetic, so you literally just set it down there and it stays in position and then plugs into that cord right there. And that's all you need to do to uh, mount a light inside. Make sure that the uh, zipper is closed completely. It's a very stiff zipper. And you will also want to um, make sure that that valve right there, that little round black valve, is closed. Zipper should be maintained with the zipper lubricant that comes with the tower. That's a very robust zipper, very expensive zipper, I might add. Uh, but it does need lubricant every once in a while. Okay, just pulling up the uh, little skirt cover to make sure it doesn't bind on the tower as it inflates. And uh, we are ready to plug it in and go. The tower has an internal pump system with automatic pressure control. Plug into the black cord. This will run off a standard uh, uh, car inverter, 1500 watt, easily handles it, uh, even a thousand. As the tower starts to fill with air, you want to make sure you have the end of that control rope in sight and uh, ready to grab it. And you're going to uh, allow it to inflate and literally restrain it from pulling up with that rope. And that's what gives you control over it. And here the tower starts to lift. John is going to remain near the base of the tower at all times. Restraining it, and you get to where you can gauge uh, how much back pressure you want to feel. This tower is so big, you can actually get more force than you'd like to deal with if there's no payload up there. He's just gradually letting it out. And there we go. Now, pump will continue to run. Notice he's uh, dressing the skirt just a little bit there. Make sure it doesn't bind. That's something you want to always check as you inflate. Tower is going up to full pressure. And it cuts off. Now, at this point, it'll only cut on periodically just to maintain the proper pressure range, which is around uh, 37 inches water column, about a a pound and a half of pressure in there. A little less than a whitewater raft. When you're ready to deflate, First, unplug the light if you have it plugged in and give five minutes for that to cool. Then unplug the pump system. There's a small valve above that. Unscrew part of the way until you hear the air coming out and locate your control rope. Never unzip the zipper until it's deflated. Okay, John is going to pull on it until it starts to bend at the top. As the pressure drops, it'll get to a point where you can put a bend in the top. You gotta be patient, let the pressure bleed down. There, there it goes. Of course, this all happens a little easier when you've got a weight up there. Okay, now he's going to let it deflate. As it deflates, he can keep pulling it down. In this way, you've got complete control of your payload the whole way down. 
You literally pull it down. You don't let it fall over. John's actually opening up the valve a little further so that it'll deflate faster. Now at this point, you can close the valve and tie it off and you might make a change to your antenna or your payload. Or you can proceed with the deflation. John's gonna go ahead and tie it off in any case. Okay, now John will access that upper deflation zipper through the outer cover and he's gonna open that up at least part of the way to cause it to deflate more rapidly. Never open these zippers unless you've lowered the pressure substantially first. Now with that open, you can just walk it out. As it deflates. Whole process very controlled, easy for one person to handle, and very safe. All right, now that we've got it completely on the ground, John's going to open up the main deflation zipper, opening the Velcro cover and then the Velcro flap over the zipper. And he's going to open it up all the way, and it will very rapidly deflate. You leave those zippers open as you roll it up uh, to let the air escape so it's easy to pack. And uh, you'll have this thing uh, packed up and ready to drive off in less than five minutes. Go. Okay, John is going to fan fold this thing back into its bag. Now, you notice on the first step he just fan folds it, just lays it on top of the bag. Very quick way to do it. That allows it to uh, use its own weight to push the air out. And then all he's got to do is reach around and pull the cover up around it. Very fast to pack. You can uh, either roll up your control rope or take it off completely and put it back in its bag. And then unpin it and fold it back up and you're ready for the road. Uh, there is a travel cover that goes over it as well to keep it from getting muddy. Uh, we're not going to show that. It's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, we're getting ready to pull the uh, tower off of the Jeep. John's going to uh, he folded it back up so we can put the wheels back on. Those wheels are not for long distance use. They're just a convenience so that you can roll it into the warehouse. Uh, you will notice the uh, ratchet straps there. Uh, that's how the tower is attached to the receiver hitch mount. Allows you to remove it and you will see um, these load patch rings all around the edge of the tower, uh, those can be secured to stakes direct to the ground if you would like to use this in a fixed location. Or you could uh, bolt it down to, say, a flatbed trailer that way. Very easy to remove from the receiver hitch mount.